Hi, I am Samit Wahan and this is The Young Cut. Today, we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship in the creative spaces, what it means to be an entrepreneur, what you have to look out for, and the realities that a lot of people seem to ignore or romanticize about. So, we're going to get right into it. All right. For most creatives, it feels like an easy segue to get into entrepreneurship. So what does it mean to be an entrepreneur in a creative space? Um, it means that you can be your own boss. It means that you report to yourself. And mostly these are jobs that are mostly remote or contract based. So you'll find people like graphic designers, uh, moving up to have small agencies, video videographers coming together to form production companies, voiceover artists coming together to have an audio studio. And every now and then an account person can move up to become, you know, an executive or start their own agency or even copywriters do it remotely. Now, most often people tend to romanticize how it is. And I'm here to tell you that it's not as easy as it looks on the outside. What you usually get when you're in an agency is you get what I would like to call the shielding of an agency, right? So if you're a copywriter in an agency, for example, you don't have to go out and source clients, you don't have to meet clients, you don't have to deal with any of the stress of day-to-day -day calls and emails and conversations. Now, if you take yourself out of that scenario and you now have to deal with the client directly, sometimes there's a lot of discourse and there's a lot of heat because you do not have client relationship management skills or you do not know how to manage your time properly or because every time someone used to take the pressure for you, now you are literally taking the pressure yourself and so you can't deal with that effectively. So I think I, I may have jumped the gun a bit, but I was just saying that a lot of people want to be creative entrepreneurs and I'm here to tell you why maybe you shouldn't. The idea is not to make you not want to be uh, a creative entrepreneur. It's just to give you the reality of you know how things happen on ground because this is uncut and that's what we do over here. Now, before you get into any business, there are two things that you need. Um, first, you have to have actual capital. So your actual capital could be, it could be money, it could be your resources, it could be your people, it could even be the space that's your capital now the second thing that most people keep forgetting especially in the you know creative space is social capital social capital is who you know and who knows you most often than not people who are already in agencies so if you take like a couple of like the big agencies like ourselves obviously um you know we know people and people know us so it's easier for us to go to places and to get jobs now if someone from my team as an example maybe my graphic designer or my copywriter says that okay now they feel that they can run things by themselves and they decide to leave they may have some amount of actual capital right so they may have their skill set they may have their knowledge they may have their laptop or whatever it is they work on but what they don't have is social capital and that's very important because Accra is a very small space for creative enterprises so if you do not know somebody it's very difficult for anybody to trust you with their work secondly what you have to also take notes is what i would call the agency covering so i mentioned it already now if you work in an agency that is a process and the job may probably come to the lead who would distill it and have all these lengthy meetings with the clients, assign it to an account manager, who would then take it forward, assign it to an art director, who will break it down, and then it may probably come to you, who is the copywriter or the graphic designer. Now, this is a funnel of four or five people who have cemented down the information to the easiest and clearest way for you to understand it and to make your job easy. These are the same people that correct all the things that you do when it's going back up to the client the same people that deal with the heat of the client before it gets to you so that that doesn't happen and you're frustrated now imagine that you do not have all these people 
right so it just becomes you and the client and you are the account manager you are the accountant you are the relationship manager you are the creative yeah. director you are the copywriter all in one it may it may sound fun and romantic because you may assume that you would be getting more income or more money but what you also don't look at is what you're selling and you're now selling your time you're selling your health and you're selling your skills at what may even be like a cheaper rate because you're offering all these things as a combo and the client may not pay for everything but you have to offer those services because if i come to you as a remote designer i am coming to you for your design skills i'm not coming to you for your client management or your account management skills so that's something that you have to take into cognizance before you decide to become an entrepreneur in the creative space lastly is how much value or how much assumed value do you have now if you work in an institution you work in an agency let's say you work in sync as an example um whatever job that we do as in sync it's also a job that you can say you did right so if i run let's say a three months campaign for airtel tigo as an example if you are the designer on that job you can also put on your portfolio that you did work for airtel tigo and that is assumed value because being a member of this community means that whatever benefit that we get whatever glory whatever growth that this client brings us or this job brings us you are part of it now imagine you are not and you are on your own then now you have to prove your value to everybody that meets you because they'll ask you oh what have you worked on and because you are a single individual or most of the times you may be like two people you do not have enough to show and in the creative space your portfolio and your resume and your references are very important so that's why it may be a no to enter into a creative you know entrepreneurship however if if you are one of great skill because there are people who may not also necessarily have great social capital or they may not have great actual capital but sometimes the skill shines through and you know your work is seen and admired and people come to you directly that's also great you just have to learn how to manage your time manage the relationship and it would be great if you partner with someone who can handle the business side so you handle the art side of of your establishment when is the right time to move on it's it's quite a big question that i've asked myself a couple of times and i've been asked before first you have to know your value right and if you know your value you will know when you feel the the space that you're in is not offering you as much value or as much equity as you're giving them however you have to also understand like i stated earlier that if you're not in a space to have you know all these things working for you. if you're not in a space to have enough capital to have enough social capital to have enough resources to have someone to work with to make sure that your dreams actually come to reality then it's sometimes better to stay than to leave however you know conditions are not equal everywhere and you may not also understand the decisions of the people above you i used to be the same before i moved from where i am into leadership roles i sometimes didn't understand the decisions that my bosses took before me but the more you get into leadership the more you understand that the reason why we couldn't do a was because we wanted to do b so that when that profits then we can you know all enjoy better to answer the question there really isn't a right time to ever leave but there isn't also a wrong time to leave it's dependent on what your values are what you feel you are worthy of and what you think you can gain from being on the outside you just have to remember that the grass may always seem greener on the other side but it doesn't mean it's real grass or it doesn't mean it's proper grass it could just be artificially colored grass so ask yourself if this is worth it how much are you willing to let go and if it doesn't happen do you have a fallback or do you have a way to make sure that you haven't burnt the bridge that you could probably go back to? As a creative entrepreneur, it's been quite a fun and challenging experience for me 
because I've been able to gather a team of people that I trust. Right, so everybody on my team is someone that I completely trust that I can leave any project to and they will deliver. There are people that I'm able to sit down with and share my ideas and make it happen. There are people that are great. Basically, my team is amazing and they've made it very easy for me to manage in these spaces. Also, I have like very great partners who help manage the the business aspect of things more so i do not have to stress myself actually combining all those two things and just like this video i'm also building on my social capital to make sure that you know wherever i go people know my face and they say hey this is summit Bryan. it's it's great to be your own boss because uh, it allows you to have the freedom to think it allows you to have you know you have to be sharp on your feet you have to be quick on your feet it allows you to have more responsibility um, because you know with great power comes great responsibility and what that means is that every thought that I am going through every decision that I am taking would affect somebody in one way so how can I be the best possible version of myself so you should try it if you know everything in life is a risk um like they say you know a journey of a thousand miles starts with a step so you never know you could become the next big thing and it could be good for you or not but let's let's try to look at the best the positive part but if ever <laughs> if ever it doesn't go well for you you know we're not we're not like downplaying here but if ever it doesn't go well, you always have to remember that try as much as possible not to burn the bridges because sometimes it's good to go back to the people who are good to you and try to make things happen. It's not always glory. It's not always glory when you want to leave. Um, know your value. Know what it means to you to start a business on your own. Understand that you need capital and social capital. Try to have as much as possible. A lot of people, some people don't have social capital, but they have money, so they invest in other people. People have social capital and they go to people with money to invest in them. Know who you are, know where you stand, understand your value, be clear about what you want to do, and always be good to yourself and try to be a better version of yourself each and every day. All right, so this is Summit Wahin. Once again, this is Uncut uh, from the NSYNC Agency. And if you need us, our details will be down there and we are ever ready to give you all the advertising, marketing and content needs. Just a call away. Peace.